Got a lot of questions about my layouts recently, and while I do share the numbers, I don't share a picture of the layout, and I'm almost unreasonably resistant to doing so. In this video, though, I'm going to show you the layout that I use for virtually every ball I drill to review and use, and then tell you precisely why where the fingers are at should mean absolutely nothing to anyone. Here's a picture of my code red. This is my 65 by 5 and a quarter by 40 layout, which you'll hear over and over and over again throughout my review videos, likely as long as I'm making them. Without my axis measurements, however, where the fingers are at should mean nothing. My axis is five and a half inches right or over and three quarters of an inch up, so I track fairly high. However, were you to copy where my fingers are at and drill your finger holes in the exact same place, you may get a similar reaction, but chances are that you won't. Here's a picture of the exact same layout for someone who has an axis of four over and zero up or down. As you can see, it's quite a bit different, so if you want to use any of my layouts, all you need to do is use the dual angle numbers I provide in your positive axis point to lay the ball out. Your fingers will likely be in a slightly similar but still different place on the ball. So many times I see people that will get a look at where the fingers are at on somebody's ball and say, oh, so you drilled it to do this, when that may or may not be the case based on their axis point. It's kind of an old school train of thought when they thought that where they put the fingers would make the ball do the same thing for everyone. I mean, stack leverage was kind of the, the most popular yet one of the most misunderstood layouts because for one, putting the pin directly beside your rain finger and stacking the CG directly beneath it was considered a max hook layout. And while it does represent a very strong layout for somebody who does have a high track, for someone that tracks lower or that even spins the ball, it might even make it a pin axis layout, which is a very rolly and very smooth layout. The additional point to make there, again, is that layouts were considered universal. Stack leverage was a max hook, max hook layout, and that's just where you put the fingers if you wanted the most out of the ball, regardless of how somebody actually threw it. The next misconception, which is still prevailing today, is that hook equals back in. Well, they're quite different, and I'd, I'd almost even argue opposite. The three stages of ball motion are skid, hook, and roll. Hook is the second one. When the ball actually hooks, meaning that it stops going one direction, it stabilizes itself and starts going the opposite direction, or the, or the direction of the rotation anyway. The longer the hook phase is, the less shape you're going to see on the back end. Roll is the last phase of ball motion, where the ball simply rolls in the direction of rotation, and this is the phase where the people consider to be hook. This is the visible motion or the shape on the back end that you see. So not only was stack leverage considered a max hook layout for everyone, everyone who wanted stack leverage wanted it thinking that max hook meant max shape or max visible back end. I don't show where the fingers are at because I don't want to contribute to the general misconceptions that are still prevailing in the bowling world today. I do it here fairly reluctantly, specifically because despite sharing my layout information on every review, I'm still asked for pictures of the layout. Now, if you're just curious where that layout puts my fingers on the ball, cool. I imagine that's all that you're after. I'm pretty fortunate. I have a pretty uh, intelligent group of uh, viewers who ask really good and smart questions. However, I'm happy to say the group is growing, and I want to make sure that I'm doing the best that I can for everyone. So even if I show where my fingers are at and provide all the relevant or important information, people tend to fixate on where the fingers are at and ignore everything else. So it's like... Oh, we'll pin above the bridge and CG out. That's a, that's a long and flippy layout. Well, actually not really. While the angles and the pin length do provide me with some shape, the pin is in a fairly low flare position, especially on symmetric balls, and my drilling angle isn't super high, my valve angle isn't super low, so it's not really a flippy layout for me. It's on the sharper side of neutral, but it's a layout that gives me some shape and still offers a lot of consistency and predictability. Now, for those of you that are just confused as hell about all, all the uh, angles and measurements and all the nonsense I just talked about in this video here, I'm going to be making another one called Dual Angle Light. Some of you might remember that as the title of another video that I did. It's one of the first ones I did on the channel where I kind of broke down the dual angle measurement system, the, the whole layout system, and tried to make it as simple to understand as possible. Uh, I'm going to refilm it and improve it, and down in the description I've also linked... Um, I've got a link to a website where you're going to find the best explanation of the dual angle system that I think can be really found on paper. It's going to take you a bit to wrap your head around it, but once you get used to it, it'll just be second nature. So that's what I've got for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.